Okay, we're back here live in uh, Silicon Valley in San Jose for the Open Compute Summit 5, or the action on open source hardware development around the future of the data center, future of the cloud, future of what's under the hood, and that's what we've been covering all day, like a blanket, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and we love these emerging markets when, when, the, when the trends are created by the people who actually built the products. And that's really what it's all about here. The story here at the OCP, Open Compute Summit, is now a few years into the, into the movement, you now have adoption and, and validation by the community, which is a series of developers, individuals, and companies. And uh, our next guest is one of those new companies, LSI has joined Open Compute, and uh, Robert Ober is joining us here, uh, who's a fellow as well. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. All right, thanks. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the new entrance into the community formerly with contribution, which is we heard from Colin uh, uh, earlier about the model, which is it's not a profit, big non-profit where they put, you know, you put the money in, pay to play. It's really contribution driven here at OCP. You guys are new, LSI is new to the, uh, to the contrib with new contribution. Talk about what's, what you guys did, what the announcements are, and we'll jump into uh, what it means. Yeah, sure. Um, so for, first I want to, um, Thanks, but I, I wanted to say about uh, contributions and that. We're actually in, um, we have been in most of the open compute platforms from the start. It's just we didn't contribute those designs. So we've been uh, engaged and involved in open compute pretty much from the start. Um, but this is the first time where we've kind of stepped up and said, hey, we're, we're going to uh, contribute something to the whole community. What is that something? So it's actually two somethings. So the first one, uh, the first thing is um, a design of one of our PCIe flashcards. Um, it's called the Nitro 6209. And, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of great stuff. I could go on about it, you know, how wonderful it is. But the key thing is, it's the, as far as I know, it's the very first product that's been designed specifically for the open compute servers. They have very particular thermal, cooling, airflow uh, issues, I'll say politely. And uh, this was designed specifically around those. So it is a product that you can plug directly into an open compute server and it will work very, very well. The truth is, um, you know, we know this from some of our own other designs, is you plug uh, some of the flashcards into an open compute server and they don't work very well. They, they tend to fry. So um, that's the big thing about this. It's a contribution of something designed for the servers. The second one was, um, uh, I'm sure people know about uh, Open Vault, which is the, the enclosure for uh, you know, JBOD, however you want to call it, um, cold storage, and which is a great product. Um, it uses some of our chips in there, some of our design, but what we've dis uh, we realized it could actually be a lot better, and there are ways to um, improve the performance and uh, the capability of that. And so we're contri and contributing the changes in design, so the upgrades to the design to make it an improved product, make it far higher performance with the same drives. So essentially, you're uh, on, the, on the former, the Nitro uh, card that's specifically designed for OCP servers, you're essentially addressing the age-old problem of, of heat density yeah. Um, by uh, essentially customizing your product for an OCP environment? Is that a fair way to say it? I mean, I, yeah. I hesitate no, that, to use that, it. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's um, just, just as um, with an OEM today, for example, you know, if we're asked to do a blade device for an IBM server, it will be tailored to the environments and the form factor of that server. The, in this case, it is a flash uh, acceleration card designed specifically for the open compute server. So obviously OCP servers can be deployed in a wide variety of use cases, data center environments, hot, cold, <laughs> closets, <laughs> et cetera. We were at, uh, John and I and others from the team were at uh, reInvent, Amazon reInvent uh -huh. in November, and we were talking to James Hamilton, oh. and he okay. shared with us that Amazon knows the data center that it's going into. They know the environmentals. They, so as a result, the claim is that they can, and I, we believe them, he can get even more dense servers than you might be able to get from, from say, an ODM even. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder from a system architect standpoint if you could talk about that um, in terms of the broader market has to deal with this wide spectrum you know, of environmentals. Right? 
is Amazon sort of says, okay, uh, we've got this tighter set of tolerances that we can you bet. You know, work toward. H how much of an advantage is that? Is it, uh, is, it, is it significant from an architectural design standpoint, system architect? Is that, you know, would you love to have that type of <laughs> situation to deal with? And Actually, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm going to jump on your question and I'm going to say, well, you know, if I roll out many years, right? Yep. They're, they're, uh, the, the evolutionary direction we're going in the data center is, um, you can call it many things, you can call it pooling, you can call it disaggregation, but um, at a large scale, at a rack or multiple rack levels, you know, um, or a hyperscale data center, you want to start pulling apart the parts. And I can argue, um, I can argue this for an operational reasons, I can ar argue it for architectural reasons, but in this instance, I'm just going to talk about thermals. And um, if, if I think about the individual components, right, uh, uh, processors will tend to run very, very hot. Um, and so you need to manage those appropriately. DRAM uh, doesn't want to be quite as hot, right? It's going to have lower uh, retention. It's going to need uh, more frequent refresh the hotter it is. So you want to manage its temperature a little bit different. Flash loves to run reasonably hot. Um, but if you go over the edge, it just it falls apart. It's not going to work, right? So you need to manage Could that. Lose data, right? Yeah. And uh, and then disk drives as well. They're yep. you know they're uh, mechanical devices. They have certain limits on thermals and that you know or the, otherwise the bearings. So if you try to today when you try to put all those things in one box and manage them in one temperature profile, everything's a compromise. Whereas if you pull them apart, you can manage each thing correctly and. In the end, you can get a much denser uh, packaging. So, okay, so I guess m maybe another way of asking that question is do you see sort of, so Amazon has that luxury. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and do you see over time as the consumers of OCP solutions as sort of replicating that, that luxury by necessity? Yeah. Or do you expect that there's still going to be this ridiculous closet to uh, hyperscale class data center spectrum? Um, uh, okay, so my personal belief is that um, as soon as you start talking about a rack or more, you're going to naturally be pushing into the kind of hyperscale architectures that we're seeing with open compute, right? And it, and it will naturally evolve in certain In order to stay competitive, you're just going to have no yeah, choice. Yeah, it's just, I mean, the, the, the economics are just too compelling. You have to go that direction. You know, when, when I start talking about something like a print server or spooler or something, you know, that's tucked in a closet, that's, a, that's something different, and I think those will be on their own trajectory, and frankly, they aren't that interesting to us as a, as a company. What does your data say in terms of the economics? I mean, you hear some different you know, figures thrown around, but, but can you share with us any sort of metrics from, a, from an economic perspective that you see? You're saying the economics are so much more attractive. How much more attractive? Um, I don't think we've done a specific analysis ourselves, but I will tell you anecdotally, um, at the extreme, um, I've had one uh, large enterprise tell me they've done the calculations and they believe they could save 70% of their IT spend. 70? 70, which is unbelievable. And, um, and it's, it's not even credible when you first hear that number. But the more you think about it, it, it starts to ripple through and you can start to understand how you know, 70% may actually be plausible. It's certainly 30 to 50% savings is, is very plausible. And, and a big part of that is, you talking about before about the disaggregation, let's yeah. call it, let's use that parlance, um, being able to pull the piece, pieces apart and optimize for each one. Yep. How does that, we heard uh, Frank talk about converged infrastructure this morning, disparaging actually converged infrastructure, yeah. but conceptually uh, uh, a lot of what OCP is doing is building sort of its version of converged infrastructure, yeah. is it yeah. not? So, yeah. so help us sort of square that circle where you're pulling the pieces apart, but it converged infrastructure is bringing it all together. So, so, I, so and, and that's one of the reasons why um, uh, disaggregation yeah. as a term makes me laugh, because yes. if, you're a, if you're a server manufacturer, it's disaggregation, you're ripping my server apart, right? Yeah. But for me, my background is architecture. I just view it, view it as I'm trying to resource pool. I want, my, uh, I want to put my like resources with my like resources, and logically I'll decide how I allocate those resources, right? So I think of it more as pooling. Um, but 
so where was I going with this? Um, well, so I was asking you about you know the the, the to square the circle between disaggregation uh, yeah. and converged infrastructure. Yeah. So so. But that makes sense. Yeah, Go ahead. yeah, yeah. And um, if if I look at you know converged infrastructure or bladed systems or something, there are a lot of practical reasons why they make a ton of sense. And Frank was even saying you know they they actually there are some really good things about it. The problem is is they tend to be. Uh, architected as much to solve problems as they do to lock in customers so that there's no way you can buy any component or anything from anybody else. Right? Vendors locking in customers? Yeah, who would have guessed, On right? purpose? Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but, you, know, you mentioned pooling a couple times now, and I think pooling, I think virtualization. Um, and there's been some discussion about beyond virtualization. I wonder if, again, I can get a, your systems architect perspective. Um, do you see that virtualization layer, which today is up here, coming down into those individual sort of components. I mean, I guess you're seeing it with SDN, yeah, you saw it with yeah. compute, you're sort of seeing it with, with storage, certainly with software-defined storage. What's your expectation for that migration? Um, well, no big surprise being at LSI, I've spent most of my thought cycles on storage, right? Um, but, but I think there, uh, where we're going is, uh, it's interesting, you, 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 you call it virtualization. Um, I was having dinner, okay, I'm gonna name drop. I, I was having dinner a few weeks back with a friend of mine, he's the CTO of Baidu in China. Uh -huh. And we were talking about some of the concepts we've got and that we're working on, and he says, wow, you know, to me, I would call that hardware virtualization. And I think, that, and I think that's yeah. true. I think that's the direction we're going. So um, what, what, what you're seeing is, is where the hardware is being deconstituted and pooled, um, and in, in my case, you know, it's especially storage is being pooled and made accessible from multiple servers. All the storage is accessible directly as if it's directly attached. And I can, re I, I can allocate the resources, you know, whether it's uh, bandwidth, capacity, whatever, I can allocate it to individual. Uh, so we have, get two, in here? we have two minutes left. I want to get a question. <laughs> um, good conversation. I didn't want to interrupt Dave. That's uh, Dave on a roll. Um, um, <laughs> But I want to, it was good to follow that through. It was an awesome conversation, really, really important to, to talk about those two areas. But you brought up Amazon. I want to ask you specifically um, to talk about Amazon because when we were at Amazon reInvent in Vegas, they didn't really open the kimono and tell us what's going on with their devices. We asked um, them, them how much they're buying. They kind of hand wave, oh yeah, OCP, we follow it. We love what they're doing, but it's just not for us. I mean, golf clap, as you say. Golf, it was David and golf clap, you know. <laughs> Good try, keep on, keep on going, boys. <laughs> Meanwhile, we heard rumors that they have some really badass um, form factor devices that they're building. So what's your thoughts on where are they going? What are they doing? Why aren't they adopting OCP? Uh, are they just on their own thread? What are they doing technically? Because they've got, they, they got pools, they've got power in their, net, their cloud, and people are looking at Amazon saying, hey, you know, that's a black swan in my opinion, but open compute, <laughs> And, and OpenStack is a nice solution. Yeah. And it could be Amazon-like, so we're, yeah. we're seeing a, yeah. you know, a nice thread there. But what is Amazon doing? What's your technical uh, 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 well, architecture tell you? Well, well two, two, two things I'll, I'll say up front. One, I'm, I'm not allowed to talk too much about some of the things. And two, I don't actually have great detail on specifically what Amazon is doing. I will tell you that they have an incredibly diverse set of platforms, so they have it, I mean, it's a very complicated infrastructure, right? It's not homogenous like, like we like to think about things. Um, so it's a very complicated one. So even if they were to use OCP, it would be on one platform and not a whole bunch of others, presumably. Um, well, which is essentially what James Hamilton said, you know, yeah. hinted yeah. toward, yeah. is that you know, OCP doesn't have enough configurations ex to ex exactly. address our unique needs, so we have to customize you know, yeah. to the nth degree. So. Yeah. It wasn't so, ruling out OCP. He, what he's saying is that what you're saying is that yeah. well, you can use it in a pocket. It's not going to have a, a real big impact right away. Yeah, and and I think the the reality is is if you go one step further, any of the you know pick your number five six largest data centers in the world, um, they already have solved a lot of these problems. They already have answers themselves. So while they might respect uh, and someday use OCP, there's no burning need to, right? Because they've already resolved these problems pretty much on their own. I mean, for example, Microsoft's contribution is phenomenal, right? Yep. And it's a peer to OCP. They solved their and, problem. Yeah, they solved it themselves. Kudos to them for giving it to the community, right? But they're, you know, you look at Google or, or, or Amazon or Baidu or, you know, they've already solved it on their own, right? So, so those top five or six guys, they're interested, they respect OCP, 
but they have no burning need to use it. I think where OCP and OpenStack both uh, really come together is they take the hyperscale deployment model, the hyperscale management model, and they make it available to enterprises and smaller, uh, smaller deployments, right? They bring the, the concepts and capability to the masses. Rob, I know we're tight on time, but oh. I wanted to Well, we were on. saying earlier that, that, you know, I was just at the Mac 30th anniversary uh, oh. party Saturday night. My name's up on one of those posters It was there. so awesome. It really was an amazing event. I personally had a lot of joy there, being there, and just that's my generation, a little older than me, but you know, I was coding in the early 80s, and that was all. I can <laughs> totally relate to the stories about you know, fighting over 60 bytes between Finder and Mac Payne. I was rolling in my, in my seat, just laughing. It was fun. But those are hardware geeks, right? Yeah. The Homebrew Computer Club, and they talked about it, and uh, Bill Atkinson said, we made the Mac for ourselves. We would have worked for free. These are yeah. the sound bites, right? You know, I'm oversimplifying it, but I was saying earlier, if the homebrew club were around today, they'd be here. Yes, right? absolutely, absolutely, this and is it. This is where they're making it for themselves. Yeah. Uh, and that's what you're saying. Amazon is making it for themselves, yeah. made it for themselves. So if that's true, we call it the, the corp brew club. <laughs> Corporation brew, whatever, <laughs> not homebrew. If it's the homebrew for the future, modern data center, what is the cool things for the for these guys that are tinkering around? We're seeing some stuff up up on stage, but you know, you're in architecture, you're looking at new ways to put this together. Uh, what is the future was of the data center OCP working on? What's the the new things that you think are that are intoxicating for the engineers and the software? Uh, there, I mean, there's, I mean, talk about a target-rich environment, right? Um, Personally, I've been working on, on new and novel uh, storage architectures, just ways of um, you know, kind of harmonizing uh, the architecture so you can have flash and disk and boot. Um, but there are a lot of things beyond that, right? There's, uh, there's whole new storage models coming. Um, I think we're a uh, key value store. I mean, I think we're going to see a migration away from block and file towards key value and more object-like uh, systems. Um, you know, it'll take forever for the long tail to decay, but there's new exciting stuff. Um, uh, photonics and optics, big deal. I mean, when you start unbottling the, the interconnect um, latency and bandwidth, uh, I think new memory types. I mean, we've got phase change coming, but then there's spin torque around the, uh, around the corner. That opens up, once you integrate that as extended memory pools, you know, you put terabytes on a server, all of a sudden you, there are whole new styles of database structures. You can mm -hmm. do all sorts of graph theory. That opens up new, new uh, the applications. Graph databases, and, and, and yeah, flash I mean, memory, unbelievable. We, we are at a point in time that's just going to, you know, it, it, it's explosive. It's kind of fun. It's a target rich environment. I totally see it. I feel it. The magic is exploding. You can feel it happening here. It's just the beginning. This is where they're all, all the action, I mean, and, and everyone's here. It's not just tire kickers. No, you no. You got real engineers. Zuckerberg showed up because I'm sure he's curious. What the hell's going on? We're saving billions of dollars, and what do we do with this? Who knows? I mean, there's rumors that they're going to have a cloud to compete with Amazon. Who knows? Um, well, I'm, I shouldn't be <laughs> saying that on the, on the camera, uh, but sounds like you know, know. It sounds like we got a scoop there. Um, <laughs> Robert, great to get your insights. Certainly in the systems architecture. It's a game changer, a whole nother evolution's happened, revolution's happening, uh, it's happening right now, and, and it's physical. It's about the data yeah. center, it's about what the hardware's all about, to enable the software. Yeah. And really appreciate it. This is theCUBE, we're at the Open Compute Summit Live, all day coverage here, this is SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's CUBE, we'll be right back.